<clears throat> somewhat of a normal agenda. Um, so we're going to start with some recognition of our special guest tonight. Tom, I'm going to have you kick us off. Uh, yes, indeed. So this is, uh, this is always a special time of the year when we get a chance to recognize our students. And our first recognition um, will be from the high school, but I'm going to open this up and talk about the high school and Paulson uh, because we're recognizing four students uh, for the CABE Student Leadership Awards. This is an award program that has been expanded to seventh and eighth grade uh, over the past few years. And it really does um, uh, a great job in recognizing kids who just are exhibiting some exemplary leadership skills. Uh, two students from each skill, from each student, from each school, excuse me, a male and a female are eligible to receive the CAVE Student Leadership Award. And the school principals are asked to um, solicit names from the staff who will be good candidates and who exhibit leadership skills. There's a criteria for that. So the criteria is um, looking for students uh, in your student body who are willing to take on challenges, who have the capability to make difficult decisions, who show an authentic concern for others, uh, who work well with others, willing to commit to a project, diplomatic, uh, understanding issues clearly and honoring commitments. So I say this every year and I'll say it again um, for one last time. I would love to take credit and our staff would love to take credit for all this criteria here. Um, but to the, the four families, uh, the Sandors, the Learners, the Pantanos and the Rizzos, this is a time for you all to sit back and bask in your parenting and realize that what we're recognizing tonight is truly um, an incredible family effort um, and really we're fortunate to have the four students here uh, that we're being recognized tonight. Um, our principals are gonna say some, uh, some incredible things um, about uh, these four kids. For me, it's kind of special because I know uh, a lot of, uh, most of them on a very personal level um, and, and the Rizzos uh, in particular moved to Madison and began schools here the same exact time that I moved my family here. I was superintendent for a while um, but I, um, I look and I see Trip and I see Heather and Ed and um, it is so exciting and you really should be celebrating tonight. This is an incredible recognition, um, but for all the families, this is just outstanding. Um, so um, without further ado, I would like Mr. Sayuteri, if you can, um, to uh, make some comments on behalf of Jackie and Isaac, that would be great. Sure, thanks Mr. Scaris. And obviously, I wish we were in person. This is almost as good. And I certainly appreciate the opportunity to talk about Jacqueline and Isaac. We're going to go ladies first, like we usually do. So Jackie, you're going to pretend you were standing next to me and the camera was on you. We're in the virtual world now. And I think one of the challenges for writing up you know, some positive words about each student is trying to keep everything to one page. We could write forever about all of the many positive things. So as parents, in this case, Mr. and Mrs. Sandor and Mr. and Mrs. Lerner, I'll get to Isaac in a moment. You, know, you should be really proud. You know, it's been amazing working, you know, with the two students over the past four years. You know, this last trimester has been a little bit different to say the least, but this is still an exciting time. So I'm going to read a prepared statement about you, Jackie. You can just sit there and smile virtually and hopefully you really enjoy the words. You've earned them to say the least. And then Isaac, you'll be up next. So you can sit back and just wait your turn. So a quick review of Jacqueline's transcript will certainly confirm that she is an outstanding student. Taking the easy road has never been an option for Jacqueline as her schedule has always been filled with honors and AP courses. She genuinely enjoys these challenging courses and has excelled academically due to her high level of confidence, organization, and a growth mindset. Jackie works hard every day with a relentless focus that ensures ongoing improvement. She thrives when presented with challenging situations. Her teacher view her as a leader in the classroom and as a role model who has the ability to make everyone around her better. In addition to her incredible academic success, Jackie is an accomplished student athlete. She's a member of the field hockey and ice hockey teams. Due to her work ethic, commitment to the team, the level of support she provides her peers, Jacqueline was named captain of the field hockey team. Her leadership on and off the field was evident while serving in this important role and led to notable individual and team success. 
Outside of school activities, Jackie clearly values giving back to the community. She's an active member of Habitat for Humanity, taking great pride in building homes for those in need. She's also a member of Girls Coach Girls Run, where she supports girls while they train for local 5K races. She has also been able to find the time to serve a, uh, as a legislative advocate for the Connecticut Nurses Association and plans to enter the healthcare field later in life. Finally, at the school level, Jackie is an important member of our robotics club where she's in charge of outreach and repairing mechanical issues with our robots. It goes without saying, well-rounded young adult. Due to the high level of respect she has earned at the Daniel Han High School, she was selected to serve as a student representative for the Board of Education for the past two years. No matter the role, Jackie represents our school with great pride and respect. She's a natural born leader. She's goal oriented, friendly, independent, and driven to be successful. She's always willing to help someone in need due to a level of kindness atypical of her age group. Her pleasant personality allows her to interact seamlessly with people of all ages. She is truly a special young lady and well-deserving of this special recognition. So congratulations, Jackie. Thank you. Congratulations, Jackie. We miss you. The nice thing, Jackie, is you could just smile and you know enjoy this. You don't have to say anything, which is perfect. <laughs> So Mr. Scarice and Mrs. Tyne, are we just moving? And I don't mean just to Isaac. Usually we have picture moments and stuff, but that's impossible in this world. So are we just going to transition now to Isaac? Oh, oh there's oh. a picture. <laughs> that was good. Thank that you, Kim. <laughs> Although I have to be honest, standing next to Isaac would be daunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, Mrs. Iteri, I, I, this is a, a unique setting. And typically we would, you know, get in the middle of the room and take a lovely picture. But um, we'll go on to Isaac right now. That'd be great. Excellent. So Jackie and Isaac, when the time is right and when, when it's allowed, we definitely owe hugs and handshakes. So we'll, we'll catch up on that at a different time. Unfortunately, not at this moment. So Jackie, nice job being a good listener. Isaac, you're up. So big smile like always. And I am going to share the statement that I wrote about Isaac. Isaac's teachers appreciate his active participation in classroom discussions and value the fact that he never sits on the sideline. He is confident when dealing with difficult material and situations and he takes ownership of his learning by acknowledging when he may not understand the content. In these cases, he takes initiative and is a wonderful self-advocate. A, note, a noteworthy trait of Isaac's is his willingness to help anyone at any time. His unselfishness by putting others before his own needs is honorable. Isaac has always enrolled in challenging courses that will prepare him to be successful in the college environment and beyond. Over the years, he has added more and more challenging courses to his schedule. He has found honors chemistry to be a particularly interesting class due to its re relatability to the real world. Isaac's ability to listen carefully and absorb and process information quickly allows him to be very successful in all the courses he has taken. Outside of the classroom, Isaac participates in a diverse range of extracurricular activities. Within each of the organizations he is committed to, Isaac strives to obtain leadership roles and always betters the group. Leadership skills are an innate part of Isaac's personality. Peers and adults are drawn to his quiet confidence and calming personality. Many of his leisurely activities are centered on serving the community and helping others. A few outstanding activities Isaac is involved in include being a cadet in the Civil Air Patrol with the rank of Staff Star Sergeant, being a member of North Madison Volunteer Fire, and being a student representative of the Madison Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. Isaac is also a member of the Daniel Hand High School cross country and indoor and outdoor track teams, as well as a member of our impressive band. Isaac is a sincere, determined and intellectual young man. His ability to remain grounded in his strong values and morals, no matter the opinions of others is noteworthy. Isaac is committed to being successful and to ensuring that he has a positive impact on those around him. His level of maturity and compassion truly stand out among his peers. Isaac is in tune with his surroundings and he is truly a caring citizen of the world. He is most certainly deserving of this special recognition 
Congratulations, Isaac. Thank you very much. It, uh, it means a lot uh, to not only receive this award, but uh, also just to, uh, to be recognized as a good fit for um, uh, just to be able to serve and represent Daniel Hand uh, in the capacities that I have. It just, uh, it means so much to me. So thank you very much. You're welcome, Isaac. Right. Thank you, Mr. Sayatari. Thank you. We're Congratulations going to, to both of you on behalf of the board. Um, I, I, I don't know if you're able to see the chat screen, but um, Violet McInerney, one of our board members said it pretty well when she said, we wish we could give you a better send off. Um, so, um, but it is no less um, sincere on our part. And we're so happy um, you guys have contributed so much to our school and our, our town community. And we're grateful to both of you and we wish you nothing uh, but all the good things that are coming your way in the future. The world's gonna be a good place with you guys in it. Indeed. Indeed. Thank you, Mr. Sayatari. Congratulations, Isaac and Jackie. Um, two um, little pieces of information I want to pass along, uh, or just suggestions, really, uh, for all the folks that are watching right now. The best people to be watching when the speeches are being read are the moms and dads. It's just outstanding. So I, I, I ask you to watch the moms and dads because they're beaming. They've probably got a couple of tears in their eyes. And then you can watch people like me who feel like an abject failure when I listen to everything that these kids have accomplished at their young ages. So um, you can, I, I advise you to watch mom and dad though, if you can. So without further ado, um, Mrs. Hart, um, we have two recognitions for uh, Mary Claire Pantano and Trip Rizzo from Polson Middle School. We do, and it's my honor to talk about both of them today. And uh, Mr. Salateri, get ready. You've got two more outstanding students coming your way. So Mary Claire, I'll start by talking about you. It's not easy to balance life as a middle schooler these days, but Mary Claire does it all with confidence and a positive attitude. Whether she is working as a student, a performer, or a volunteer, Mary Claire demonstrates commitment and character in everything she does. Academically, Mary, Mary Claire is a hardworking and engaged student. She never gives less than 100% and gladly helps others whenever she can. It is no wonder that teachers view her as a genuine, compassionate, and hardworking student, qualities transcending those of the average eighth grader. In addition to her commitment to her academics, Mary Claire is involved in theater and musical theater, where her teacher describes her as fearless in her performances, and also treats each rehearsal and the work of others with the utmost respect. Perhaps the most impressive thing about Mary Claire is what she gives back to others. On a daily basis, Mary Claire shows empathy and concern for other students and staff. She is also active in the Excel Club, raising money for different causes. Mary Claire has been a Girl Scout for eight years, where she has been involved in many community service projects. Paulson Middle School is fortunate to have Mary Claire Pantano as a member of our community, where her uniqueness and kindness is appreciated by all. Congratulations, Mary Claire. Congratulations. And again, I wish that we could be there in person to take a photo and have this memory for you, but um, we'll do what we can to make sure that you get the recognition, recognition that you deserve, Mary Claire. So I'd also like to recognize Trip Rizzo and his family who are here with us tonight. Motivated, conscientious, and kind. These are a few of the words mentioned by members of the Paulson community when asked to describe Trip, a young man well-respected, not only by other students, but by faculty and staff. As a student and athlete, Trip has emerged as quite a leader in our school. Tripp is a hardworking student who sets the standard for conscientious work. Whether something comes easily to him or presents a challenge, he approaches each task with the same level of focus and determination. Teachers appreciated his attitude toward learning the skill and content of the curriculum. But Tripp's contributions to class go beyond that to include positive peer relations. Tripp is kind to others and considers their feelings and perspectives more than most people. He is involved in community service projects through Madison Youth and Family Services. 
This, coupled with his honesty and, and integrity, make him well liked by everyone. Outside of school, Tripp is involved in hockey and is currently captain of his hockey team. This attests to Tripp's leadership skills in and out of school. Middle school can be a tumultuous time, but Tripp's integrity, concern for others, and commitment sets him apart as a role model for all. Again, we are lucky to have him as a member of our Paulson community. And I wish you both the best of luck as you move up to the high school next year. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mary Claire and Tripp. Um, little piece of advice, Mary Claire and Tripp. Uh, you are facing, the both of you, an absolutely golden opportunity right now. So if you have asked for anything in the past, I don't know, month or two from your parents, <laughs> and they've been on the fence with deciding what to do, this is the moment. You strike when the iron's hot. As soon as you press that little red X in the right there and get out of Zoom, you start asking again, because only two kids were recognized in the eighth grade. Congratulations, you guys both well-deserved. And yeah, I've been, as I said, I've been here for eight years as superintendent and with my kids in the system, I do you know, know families on a, on a social level and the Rizzo's absolutely just lovely family. I couldn't be happier for your trip and for your family. I saw Katie, I, I see you, Katie. I see you getting your little <laughs> head in there. <laughs> Congratulations to you too. Takes a whole takes a whole army to support Trip, so you're part of it. <laughs> um, congratulations again. Now, typically we have a um, an awkward pause where we allow families to leave the meeting and not have to stay for the whole board meeting. Um, this isn't very awkward at all. There's an X in the upper right corner. Um, you can stay all night if you like, or you could just click that X, and suddenly, magically, you'll disappear from our screen. And start uh, but asking, start that wish list going. And, yes. and thank you all for being here with us today. It's so heartwarming to see you um, all. And, and we send our most sincere congratulations and best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> congratulations to the other recipients. Thank you. Congratulations. Nice. I have to have a significant talking to to my children when I get home. <laughs> they are slackers. Um, <laughs> okay, so moving on. I have to have a talk with myself. <laughs> not, not about me. Um, you realize that's on camera, Katie, right? <laughs> <laughs> and recorded. Sorry, sorry. Archives. Bring it back, Sam. No, I'm out. Yeah. Sorry. Um, okay, so moving on. Um, to public participation. So tonight is, um, we're gonna test drive this, although I don't think we have anybody. We have um, an opportunity for public comment tonight. Um, I just want everybody to know the board values your input and thanks you for your engagement. Anyone who wishes to speak can do so by hovering over your name and raising your virtual hand. Um, you may also use the chat function of Zoom. Please state your name and address before speaking. Just as a reminder, public comment allows the board and superintendent to hear issues of interest, but does not allow an opportunity for dialogue between the speaker and the board and superintendent. Are there any members of the public that would like to speak? Wendy, I'm seeing one attendee. Um, Katie, I think that was just the grandmother of one oh. of the kids that that was watching them get their award. Um, I don't think she's signed off as yet, but she okay. does not have, she hasn't indicated to me that she'd like to speak. I don't see anything in chat either. So, okay, no. let's move on. Um, I am so thrilled <laughs> to talk about number three on our agenda, which is our um, student representatives report. And we haven't seen you guys since March. Um, so it is so, so good to see you both. And I'm gonna turn it over to you, mute yourself, so that if you guys can give us any updates and please let us know how you're doing. So I might as well start it off. Um, so I think it, the same thing with everyone, the first like couple of weeks were definitely very different and very hard. It, it, it's just such a big switch, but with all those surveys that were sent out to see what was going on, those definitely helped with changing it a little bit, and it, it started to it's starting to smooth out. So it's starting it's going well now, for me at least. Also, um, I'm 
pretty sure AP testing is going on last week and this week. And uh, there's been a lot of that going around. Um, I know a lot of the seniors are wondering about like, they usually, usually seniors get to get out like a week early. And now they're telling us that we might not be able to do that and still have to like do classwork because we've already had so much time off. I don't know if you guys saw, but there's like some petition going around about like getting out completely like right now. I haven't noticed anything <laughs> at all. <laughs> I haven't sent him anything at all. No, I haven't seen it. No one sent me anything. I'm fully unaware. And that's being recorded right now, correct? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't, but that's just from the senior class. I know it's just, a, everything's kind of a big bummer. And I know a lot of things with financial aid and stuff are all getting kind of screwed up right now. No one knows if they're going to school and people are trying to work. So, but other than that, it's just school, but online. <laughs> Jackie, there's been um, a remarkable commitment um, from Mission Salutary the team at the high school and the student leadership team uh, to come up with some uh, some really positive ways to to do um, some events at the end of the year uh, beyond just graduation. We all know we're working hard in graduation, but uh, pretty soon Mr. Salutary will be rolling some of those out, and we're we're working with um, our professionals in town to get their blessing, and they've been really supportive too. So I think the seniors are going to have a you know some, a positive shot in the arm down the stretch here. Um, so just stick with us. You got a little ways to go. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. And you guys deserve it. <laughs> Big deal. So all the work that's going into it, I think will pay off. And I just want to give a special shout out to Eric Dillner, um, who has used his time off to be making some mm -hmm. um, mask extenders um, for us. And, the, and I had a present in my mailbox and um, was so appreciated by the staff at the Children's Hospital. So um, he's, you know, there's no moss growing under his feet. So um, thank you, Eric, for that. Oh, it was no problem. <laughs> Great, anything else? You guys are good? We will move on to the superintendent's report. Okay. Um, so um, in the board memo uh, that I sent out, I've mentioned uh, the initiation of uh, school opening plans. The conversations looking you know, in, in across the state towards um, what will September look like. Um, there hasn't been, and I don't foresee one playbook. Um, so the way the executive orders, if we go by the past couple months, the way the executive orders have um, come forward and been modified, it's been a trickle um, certain areas being addressed, others later on. Um, but what I think, uh, what I recommended is what I think is most important is to have a structure in place, uh, to have processes in place, to have people in place to be immediately responsive to what comes our way for September. Um, we don't know, we do not have a crystal ball uh, to foresee, um, do we flatten the curve in, in the long term? Do we spike again? Um, are we in? Are we out? Are we hybrid? Uh, there's so many different variations. No one knows. Um, what we have been able to get our hands on, though, are some pretty good resources for some other states. Washington State put out some, some really good information. Um, New York State and, and the CDC put out um, a flow chart. It's pretty basic, but it's, it's a nice resource. Uh, American Academy of Pediatrics put out um, some pretty good work. And uh, the Missouri who knew? The Missouri School Boards Association, a 90-something page document. So good resources, um, shared them across the admin team. Uh, Gail did a remarkable job uh, simultaneously over the weekend. We were working on like a cross um, reference to see, you know, we, we don't miss anything. And of course, Gail put together in a document and then nice and tidy into a slideshow, which she's gonna share uh, briefly. But our goal is to get something in a structural sense, in a process sense, established sooner than later. Um, and this afternoon, uh, I met with uh, Sam DeBurra, who is our fire marshal, but also serves as the head of our emergency operations in town. Um, met with Trent Joseph as well as a part of that group. And you all know Trent, he's been instrumental in supporting the schools. He's our director of, of um, health in town, public health. And then also Bob Galuli who um, spent a lot of time with the schools. Um, he is a deputy for Sam, a lot of time with the schools this year because he has coordinated the Alice training, which is the training um, 
uh, how we would have protocols in place to respond to any violent intruders. So he knows our schools well, and I met the three of them today. We talked about this structure. Um, they gave uh, a strong blessing. They asked us to go forward um, and keep them in the loop. And I said, not only will you be in the loop, you will be on task forces when we start to assemble these groups and we will need your expertise. So they were very, very interested in doing that. Um, but overall, we're looking at a kind of an overarching steering committee of some key members um, across the system. And then uh, breaking that off into some task force sub subgroups that could be very nimble and respond. You know, an executive order comes out on, on transportation or um, on space or on, you know, in classrooms or on um, athletics or food services, we can respond. So we really want to have that uh, in, in good form because when Dr. Patty uh, Foote starts, it'd be a beautiful opportunity to transition nicely in. Um, and have something, a structure that she could work within over the summer and help move the district towards September. My hope is we're gonna get information sooner than later. Um, that hasn't really been um, what we've experienced a great deal of, but nonetheless, if we're prepared, when the information comes, uh, we'll act. So with that preamble, I'd like Gail to share, um, I think you have three slides, Gail? Mm -hmm. and, then a, and then a small little prezi, I think would be helpful. So. Um, Going to hand it off to Gail to, to share some of the details. Thanks, Tom. Um, yeah, I think that uh, you know you'll see a very uh, similar approach to um, looking at this um, the possibilities in this moment as you saw as we closed in elementary school and we redistricted. Um, definitely taking a look at systems and how to have different people and an organizational structure responsible for those systems. So uh, Tom explained it quite well. We took uh, a number of documents into consideration, probably more information than I had ever thought about in terms of uh, looking at the possibilities, but I think we have a lot covered here. Um, so right here uh, at the very top of the screen, you'll see the District Response Steering Committee. It's 14 members strong. Um, and it takes a, a wealth of knowledge and expertise from the steering uh, task force, from the task force committees and puts them all into um, a, a very nimble 14 member team. Uh, their purpose, their objective is to disseminate information to the task force for operational use, uh, to vet protocols and procedures that come out of the task force and also to coordinate district responses and communicate to various stakeholders and agencies as need be. Um, the way that it works, you'll see below the district um, steering committee is that there's two divisions. One's called the infection control division and the other is the activities and academics division. Those divisions have a number of steering committees underneath them. And you'll see the green little tabs at the bottom and the yellow little tabs, those are the steering committees. Um, the idea is, is that as the information flows down to the divisions and down to the task force, and they are wrestling with whatever uh, their division's about, that they'll be presenting um, drafts and protocols and processes back up to the steering committee for us to vet under two filters one being doability, the other being consequences and unintentional impacts. Um, the steering committee will take actions as needed. They'll uh, move to communication to inform Board of Ed policy changes as need be, and to also um, secure whatever um, procurement um, uh, devices that are needed in order to make that plan um, operational. So again, there's two different divisions, and then these are all task force um, groups that take action and develop protocols. So taking a look at those task force, you will see some familiar names um, in charge of those task force. And underneath the task force, I'll, I'll start with Liz's um, task force, the healthcare and screening task force. Um, they will be taking a look at two very distinct uh, pieces of healthcare. One is screening and the other is monitoring. 
Um, again, art, you'll see the familiar three under arts uh, task force. Um, he's got three task force all operating under his um, division. And you'll see, um, again, a variety of other interests. I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail about what's involved in a task force because each one of these tabs has a number of considerations. Um, so I'm gonna bring you right into this Prezi piece. For those of you who have never seen a Prezi, it can make you dizzy. So I'm gonna link to this and hopefully you can see my screen. So here again is our district response steering committee. And this piece is one under the, um, under the academics and also the um, personnel piece. So you'll see that Heather Dobson's in charge of this particular task force. It has two components, staff and students. Again, activities and academics. This is one under my direction and Liz's direction, taking a look at students with special needs as well as intervention. Again, under activities and academics, there are four task force um, that need to be considered under instructional models. The other end of the considerations for reopening schools, of course, is infection control. And that's a large division. I'm gonna start with the one that is going to impact almost all the other um, task force. And that is one that's chaired by the entire central office admin team, as well as building principals. And you'll see there's quite a few um, considerations in terms of social distancing procedures. And then the other category is limiting um, any contaminants. That impacts almost every other division. This is healthcare screenings. And Bill, of course, looking at the physical plant, not only looking at exposure controls, but also responding to confirmed cases. And you'll see that all of these task force, of course, have a lot of CDC guidance that we need to consider. So here's ARTS triple threat. Um, you'll see some commonalities in there of PPE use and procurement. Um, and you'll see in a lot of these really looking at choke points or areas of congestion and how to eliminate those. So that is an overview. Um, hopefully it, it gives the board some perspective on how we're looking at uh, taking action and how we're uh, hoping to address uh, the many questions that will come our way in the future. Wow. Thanks, Gail. Um, so you know, a couple of quick things on that. This is our first pass at this. Um, you know, a lot of work's been put into it, obviously, and some incredible resources. And Katie, thank you. You shared a couple of those with us as well. Um, uh, we've gotten off to a, a really strong start. We have a lot of definition to do. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, the admin team meets tomorrow. Uh, the full team will be spending most of our meeting um, on this topic. And again, it is to really get the infrastructure uh, in place to um, have processes, to have um, people positioned so we can be responsive, um, anticipating an opening in September. Um, we don't know what's gonna happen, but anticipating an opening, we wanna be ready. Uh, we wanna know that we have people that are ready to respond to it. Um, we would love to, when this is a finished product and hopefully sooner than later, have this on our COVID tab on the website. Uh, Diane, I saw you asked about hard copy. Absolutely, we can, we can get that out to everybody. Um, the only thing is, is that it, you know, certain parts could change. Um, we didn't go over with a fine tooth comb every detail with um, the, on the town side, our, our health professionals and our emergency operation professionals. So we expect some feedback from them as well. Um, but I think we've advanced pretty quickly in this area. Um, I would see those little sub task force would include 
know, I always use the example like athletics. If we're back in school and there's athletics, we need Craig Semple, we need some varsity coaches, we need probably one of the administrators, um, to uh, probably our nursing supervisor or our, our athletic trainers to be ready to respond to whatever regulations come our way. Uh, today, Craig Semple sent to me and TJ Salutary um, some national uh, guidelines that have come out from uh, the National Federation of High Schools, uh, it's a sports alliance, um, really 16 page document. You know, they're, they're, folks are out there and, and they're starting to produce some good work. I think what's, um, I'll leave on this though, I think what's most challenging for us is I go back to when Sandy Hook happened um, and the responsiveness needed from a security perspective at that point in time, um, everybody moved heaven and earth. But there were examples um, largely around the country where we could point to where maybe there were some less secure areas and they had different approaches to building level security um, and technologies that you know the quiet little suburbs didn't. That playbook was kind of there. Um, yeah, we've had training on global pandemics. I remember during H1N when I was a middle school principal and I remember going to a workshop on it at that time, but it just seemed like a science fiction movie. Um, so there are resources out there, not nearly as you know, codified as um, on the, the hardening of your uh, schools for security. So we're getting the information and I'll, find, I'll end on this. The most important thing that I'd recommend is in the midst of a leadership transition, it's gonna be critical to have structures and processes in place with the people who are here that are gonna do the work um, for the system. And I think this creates a real nice space for that to happen and for the transition to happen very smoothly. And that's, that's the goal here, so. Yeah, Tom, I think that the thing you said about Sandy Hook too, I think you knew what you were, what your end yeah. point was, right? Sure, and oh yeah. We don't, mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. we don't know um, when it's gonna end, when things will loosen, when the threat will be over, when the vaccine will be available. Yeah. Um, so it, it, I appreciate um, the nimble approach to this and I'm really happy to hear that there is a goal for um, some sort of reopening in September. Um, uh, and again, I, I, I imagine that will change in how it looks many times over between now and then. Um, I, I um, was at the CABE chair meeting with the commissioner on last Friday. Mm -hmm. And um, at one point they asked a question on what the plans were and I said, you can't even make plans. We haven't gotten good guidance and it changes all the time. And they said, no, 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 you have to make plans. Yeah. You have to make, you know, and so I think the nimble approach makes sense because mm -hmm. um, I think the goal is that there will be some sort of reopening in September, but um, I think, you know, it might change a lot between now and then what it's gonna look like. So yeah. being able to move that Jenga piece um, yep. will be important. My question though is about, um, extended school year i know that there was an executive this summer day that pushed it back it did yeah yeah so, um good is there any um are we planning on extended school year or is there any we're waiting on on more guidance i know that um liz you got the information about today correct yes i did yep we um are waiting on more guidance we are planning for you know virtual if it's virtual and live and also if it's live because even if we are allowed to have it live i do have some concerns that for some students it may not be safe for them to come in um and then also looking at the numbers so we um on thursday i have a meeting with um brian who's the head of special ed for this state and so I hope to have more information at that time. Um, I'm also communicating with all of the directors in the learn area as well. Thank you. Welcome. Any other um, questions from board members on the um, on that approach to uh, reopening schools in September? Thank you. I just want to uh, acknowledge the unbelievable amount of work that everyone is putting into this and the thoughtfulness, Gail, and the, the, all the team leaders in the work. Um, like what Katie said, it does seem that things are changing by the day, but all of the teamwork and hard work, I really, really appreciate it because mm -hmm. I, I can't even imagine. So thank you to you and to all the folks involved. Thank you, Emily. That means a lot. Um, you know, and, and someone said this to me tongue in cheek, but it, it is kind of a reality. 
you know, imagine if you were, if you owned a, a salon right now, you know, you went from one direction to the complete opposite in a matter of hours. That could very well happen for very legitimate reasons, by the way, too. Um, it, not to be critical, just reality. Um, we could get, you know, the go sign, the stop sign, the partial sign. The, so um, we'll, we will continue to do this work, you know, right up and, and, you know, as soon as we start getting more guidelines, we'll put more meat on the bones. Um, and we'll keep moving forward and we'll update the board at every meeting and in between, um, you know, as, as things evolve as well. So um, a reopening uh, is happening officially um, for the town offices and for central office. Um, I'd mentioned in um, the memo I sent to the board too, that town offices on, on May 18th, um, beginning the opening and um, uh, I'm very, very appreciative of uh, Deb Milardo, who is a human resources director on the town side, who has worked incredibly closely with um, Heather Dobson. And, and Heather's work is spectacular. I don't have to tell the board that they all know that. Um, but a partial reentry uh, began. And um, we're looking at May 26th being open to the public on an appointment basis. Uh, we've had safety protocols. We've had physical interventions, protective shield and so forth. You'll notice uh, in the front, um, we have masks being worn, especially when you're within the proximity of six feet, you're traveling um, along the hallways and so forth. Um, appointment only. And um, Henry Rihanna, who we miss dearly, she just started this year and um, she has come back. She was back yesterday. She'll be back from, uh, we're gonna do 10 to two starting next week. And um, we'll do those appointments within that time period. Uh, but I want to thank Heather. I want to give Heather an opportunity. I think I probably covered most of it, but I want to give her an opportunity anyways. But I want to thank Heather because Heather really has taken ownership of the public opening of central office again um, and all that happens there because we, we can do a lot of our work from home in those kind of knowledge-based functions, but not all of our work can be done from there and we do serve the public. So um, Heather, anything you want to add to um, the reopening of central office? I really think you covered it. Um, for some reason, my camera's not coming on. I apologize. I wanted to look at you guys face to face. Um, but, you know, as Tom said, we've been working really hard and really effectively remotely. Um, but there is at a certain point the need to, you know, physically occasionally meet with people. Um, so we were doing what I like to call a soft opening, just slowly bringing people back in, following the state guidelines, all the recommended safety protocols. Um, and so we will continue to work as hard as we always do. Um, but again, having some um, short-term physical presence in the office and again, continuing to monitor the state guidelines and following all those necessary protocols. Looks great in here, Heather. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, um, next item uh, is uh, end of the year recognition and transition events. So. The item that gets the most attention here, obviously, is the high school graduation. So I'll start there and report very positively that, again, Mr. Salutary, very proactive, got a committee organized uh, before our, our um, spring break. Uh, they met, um, we got back, um, staff, students, parents, administrators, um, and really narrowed it down to you know, a number of options to consider and that was the point of an official meeting today with Sam DeBurr, Trent Joseph, and Bob Galuli was to run through those options and say, which ones will you bless? Which ones will you tell us that were crazy? Which ones? And we kind of went through each one. And we have narrowed it down. And I think we're going to pull off a very positive graduation um, ceremony that will be um, blessed by our town public health officials. Um, we're not quite there yet. We have a few more things to take care of. But I, I have no problem saying publicly that we were very supported today. And, and Sam DeBurra, I mean, Trent's been unbelievable. I mean, on a dime, I, I call him with a question or any staff member as he gets right back to us instantly. But Sam was, I really appreciated of his efforts today. He was very, very focused on meeting the needs of our kids and our parents the best possible way we can. Um, he's a fire marshal, okay? I mean, I, I love teasing him because he comes in, he, we get in trouble for our doorstops or, you know, but he really is committed to making this happen. And he picked apart the latest executive orders and really tried to find ways that we could do this in a safe way, keep our kids safe, our family safe and, and get this done the right way. So I'm appreciative of that and I'm excited about that. So I think we'll more, much more to come, much more to come. Um, <clears throat> 
as I said to Jackie earlier, we also have a number of events for the seniors. Mr. Sayuteri had five different events he wanted to run through. Um, and we're going to have all five of those happen in one way or another. Um, uh, Sam and Bob and Trent uh, were able to thread the needle and make those happen. I'm not going to say Mr. Sy Mr. Ty Mr. Sayuteri's thunder. He'll get that all out when the time is appropriate, but all great opportunities for our kids. What went under the radar a bit is all the forethought of school reopening and all of the end of the year focus on graduation is we have a number of very functional end of the year events that are necessary. Um, our third graders transition to Brown. Our fifth graders transition to Polson. Our eighth graders transition to Hand. We have events where principals visit, where the students visit, where the parents get time to have a night. We're missing a lot of golden opportunities to transition kids like we normally do well in advance uh, of these key transition points in their academic careers and their social you know, development. So um, administrative team to spend some time tomorrow. Uh, Kelly Spooner has uh, kind of championed the cause to put together um, one document that we can start to collect and take information on what are all these events and just go through which ones are necessary that we really have to make sure we have in some shape or form that we hold and then go from there and say, well, then how could we do it now? Um, we all know the virtual, the, you know, the, the video, the kind of asynchronous approach. Um, so we're going to, we're going to brainstorm some different ways, some of those critical events to see if we can um, get those transition activities and the year activities to happen. The celebratory ones you probably saw, you know, we got a parade tomorrow for, for Jeffrey, uh, Ryerson's doing one, Brown is doing one. Um, I had talked to the police last week about this, um, about a parade route for Jeffrey. And, you know, again, they were tremendously supportive in, in saying, what do you need? What can we do? You know, our SROs are willing to jump in and help us and so forth. Um, as, you know, as well, pretty common sense here, the parade tomorrow, for example, we're not going to stop traffic. Um, they're going to kind of go through the neighborhoods and beat the horns and wave. And it's going to be a, a very, very uplifting event. I know it will be, um, but the police have been supportive also of those kinds of things. So a lot more to, to figure out, um, but um, I will keep the board apprised as we can flesh out these activities and which ones we can hold. Any questions on, on those events? No, just thank you for all the work that goes into it for the police department and Sam and Trent and um, it really does take a village and um, I, I mean I said it before, but I'll say it again, I, I, the kids really miss their teachers. Um, mm. And so it's really nice that they're taking and making mm. that extra effort um, tomorrow to um, spend some time. Mm -hmm. um, getting a little FaceTime with them. Um, yeah, it's going to be exciting for them. Yeah. So, but, but it's no small feat. And so mm -hmm. um, I just want to acknowledge all the effort and time that went into planning that. And I mm -hmm. know it's going to be really meaningful for, for everybody. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, next item, we have um, a little bit of a process update and Catherine Hart's going to help me on this one. Um, I like to think of this as um you know, we, we, there are people in our lives uh, that live in communities that just interact with us and have a way of um, having that pebble in the pond effect. Um, and Dave D'Alessio was that kind of a person. Um, Dave, um, you know, the ripples of positivity just went so far beyond him, the people he impacted in the classroom um, when he was coaching and just being a community member, um, you know, grew up here, graduated here, taught here, families here, raise his family here. Um, he's a Madison guy through and through. He was an absolute pillar. I couldn't think of a better candidate um, who lived his life the right way and who truly was a po quiet, quiet, positive impact on so many people. Um, I couldn't think of a better way to really honor him than to take the time to uh, formally recognize him and uh, name uh, the wrestling room in, in the Polson Middle School after him. So Catherine Hart um, has done some work uh, with the committee. There's a rather prescriptive process in board policy, which uh, Catherine's a rule follower, and she's done a very good job starting on step one and working her way through and keeping me updated along the way. So Catherine, can you give an update to the board on that process? Happy to. Thank you, Tom. Yes. Yeah, so um, 
I think you're probably all familiar with policy 7551, the written, uh, naming of school buildings, components of buildings and our school grounds. And as Tom said, uh, I, I follow the rules and I've actually done this before for Reed Garrett up at Brown Middle School when we named the band room after him, also a legend in Madison. And this was this stemmed from an idea of the staff uh, from the staff at Paulson who really thought that um, Dave deserved this honor uh, after his passing. Um, so right now we have gone through the steps where we put out a um, petition to collect the signatures that we needed 100 signatures from Madison residents. That was achieved in less than a half hour. Um, and we eventually stopped it with, um, I think 1500 signatures and granted some are from all different um, all different towns, and in fact, some from all different states, which is fascinating to see that uh, students who were under, uh, who were wrestling under Dave or had him as a teacher or both, uh, still remember him and wanted to contribute to this. So uh, I've shared the comments and then the, all of the signatures from the 1500 people um, with Wendy, who I think has shared it with the board too. And the next step would be to establish a subcommittee and there's um, certain people that need to be a, a part of that. And I would be happy to be the administrator who represents Paulson for that. Um, I have to give credit to Melissa Arms. She uh, is a teacher, math teacher at Paulson, but um, her husband uh, knows Dave, knew Dave very, very well. Um, and he was a family friend to them and they have been instrumental in reaching out to collect the 10 letters of recommendation and I read every single one of them and it, they touched my heart and I would be, um, that will be the next step is to be sharing uh, those 10 letters of recommendation with this subcommittee, uh, his resume of service that not only includes his accomplishments in the wrestling world, but his experience as an educator in Madison. And then there was actually an article that I um, have from a wrestling organization that really outlines everything that he has accomplished as well. So the next step would be to be part of that subcommittee. Uh, Katie, I'm happy to work with you on that. Um, I think that we can go through the process and complete this whenever we need to. And then obviously the recognition, the actual dedication um, would happen when we can get people together again. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. So if I understand you, um, you and I will populate the committee. Certainly. And then begin the work. That would be great. And uh, it includes, uh, um, us, but you know, a uh, teacher, parents, uh, members of the community. So there's a lot, all different stakeholders that are included in that, which is great because uh, mm -hmm. Dave touched so many different lives. Oh, I, yeah, I think we're going to have um, a hard time narrowing down the amount of people that would like to participate. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> was... Katie, Katie, Wendy can help do some of the organizing on your end and putting this all together. So count on it, Wendy. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. No problem. So I'll forward all the information I have to Wendy so that she can help with the facilitating the next steps. That'd be great. Thank Sounds you. Good. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. Great Thank work. Um, the uh, next item is um, just a little preamble to an action item later on. Uh, we have an amendment to our Chartwell's agreement uh, back on, I think it was April 28th. Um, Art uh, Sickle had mentioned that uh, we wanted to amend the agreement with Chartwell's, extend it for another school year no material changes other than the agreement, which goes uh, until June 30th of 2021. Um, it was initially thought that there was gonna be a slight increase in the Chartwell's fees, but uh, the amendment's been negotiated that all the fees for Chartwell's will remain flat for the duration of the one-year extension. So that's good news. Um, so later on in the agenda, there'll be an action item for that. And um, Art will remain on if there's any discussion topics or questions on that. Okay, and uh, very quickly wrap things up. Um, we typically do a board of ed retiree recognition, uh, given you know uh, the nature of our meetings. I think it would be best if we did that at the building level, uh, where they may have an opportunity to do some in-person um, type of event, uh, maybe at some point. Um, and the number of retirees is very low uh, this year, so I don't think um, you know it's a bad decision to do it that way. Um, Two other uh, brief um, topics as far as closing out the year. We did put together a protocol um, and I really wanna thank Kelly Spooner, Becky Frost. Um, tremendous job putting together a protocol for the Kirk. clean, I'm sorry? Oh, putting out a protocol for the um, cleaning out of classrooms. 
So we have to be very, very careful in, in how we do that, how we approach that. Um, we sent that over to Sam DeBurra, Trent Joseph, Bob Galuli. They were blown away by the thoughtfulness, by the depth, by the specificity. I actually reached out to the president of the CEA as well, uh, Jeff Leake, um, who had, they put out some guidelines the CEA has uh, for assisting teachers. And we have checked every box that they have requested on that side. So we're ready to have teachers enter when the principals are ready uh, with a protocol. Um, the, the, probably the trickiest thing, we'll also have student um, materials to collect and books and so forth. The trickiest one that's gonna be a challenge um, because of the need to disinfect and, and, and not be in close proximity is the collection of Chromebooks at the end of the year. So um, Art Sickle's working closely with the principals to figure out a process for that. Um, we've got some really good ideas on the table right now. And, and um, again, Sam and Trent and Bob have been wonderful in, in you know, kind of vetting those ideas. So that's it for the Superintendent's Report. Well, that was a big one, but um, I just have one um, comment on the retirement um, celebration. Um, yeah. Also one of my favorite nights of the year. Um, so very sad that um, it won't be um, the usual um, celebration. Um, but I just wanted to let the board members know that I did write a letter on behalf of the board that will be included in their gifts. Um, so they will go to the retirees. Um, there are only three this year. So it would have been a very short ceremony this year anyway, but a lot um, of leftover cake. I know. Well, <laughs> I could have helped with that. Um, <laughs> add to my COVID-19. Um, but um, so I just wanted to let the board know that, that, um, that I did send that along and that will go off to them. Um, and I wanted to congratulate publicly um, all of our retirees and thank them for um, the impact that they've had in the district. So thank you. We will miss seeing you in person. Would it be possible to um, do something at a later date when people can get together if they wanted something um, in person? Uh, I'm absolutely. I'm sure we can always put the invite out and see when the dust is settled, if we can do something beyond Zoom. I think it's a great idea. Okay. Could you, could you let us know when um, the, who the folks are and when those celebrations are? Not necessarily that we need to crash the party, but that if we want to reach out and just wish absolutely. our own personal congrats, that'd be great. Yep. Um, Wendy, if you could just make a note that we'll have the principals let us know when the building recognitions will happen and we can let the board know from there. Sure, no problem. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, board member comments? Curriculum, I'm sorry, um, committee reports, curriculum and student development. Okay, this is Galen. Um, the Hi, Galen. The uh, curriculum committee met last week on May 12th uh, to discuss two broad topics, namely curriculum work and um, getting ready for the fall of 2020, both of which are subsumed um, in the uh, task force that were described so well by Tom and Gail, uh, specifically the extended learning objectives or opportunities and instructional models. The specific items that we covered focused more on sustaining student engagement and assessment, how to conduct assessment and access uh, under changing circumstances. So um, Gail, as always, please jump in to correct me or add, add color. Um, the first topic was a progress report on portrait of a graduate. Um, it's a little ambitious, but we're expecting a draft on July 1st. I think we're in the process of conducting um, feedback sessions with sophomores or will plan to. Um, the second uh, curricular aspect is an upcoming change in the uh, Daniel Hand Program of Studies format. I believe we are recoding some STEM classes and making it compliant with some um, NCAA uh, regulations. Um, the third item we covered uh, had to do with um, inviting some literacy coaches that we had scheduled. And Gail, you're going to have to help me out. I know that one's Rachel Gabriel. The other one is Ben, and I don't remember his last name. Dr. Benjamin Powers. Yep, Benjamin Powers. He's from Thank Southport you. School. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Gail took the opportunity to redirect them to ask how to uh, do assessment and, and design um, these assessments uh, during this time. Um, the As we know, the uh, SAT has paused. Uh, uh, 
the juniors this year did not have the opportunity to take it in school. Um, the college board is working on offering weekend testing monthly, uh, August, September, October, November, December. Um, I guess dates to be determined, format to be determined, but that's in progress. Um, <clears throat> Gail also shared um, a bit of Google Analytics, our website. I think we had something over like 25,000 hits um, over the last year. Is that right? Is that just to the curriculum sites, right? Just the yeah. curriculum sites, right? Yeah, not the curriculum. Yeah. Um, and um, so that those were some of the, the um, uh, curriculum work taking place uh, in terms of getting ready for fall 2020. Um, we received a Title IX or Title IV. Uh, can't remember writing this question. Title oh, IV, thank you. I hope it wasn't Title IX. Title IV grant for $10,000 um, to rewrite. Uh, we rewrote to target students um, at risk to let them have access to Chromebooks uh, and digital assessments. Uh, we expect about 200 kids to, to, be, to avail this. Um, in particular, reading intervention. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then there's a broader discussion on how do we administer assessments um, next fall if there's a reopening, if there's an opening and a close down. As Tom said, you have to put structures in place, have nimble teams, and, um, and adjust. Um, and lastly, um, there was a report um, that the um, curriculum design work um, uh, that the board voted on giving teachers Wednesdays off has been uh, a success or at least welcomed by them um, to, to keep up with this. Um, so that that basically covered it. Um, again, Gail did it. Yeah, did, yeah, please, if I missed anything or- Gail did talk, a wonderful yeah, job. Let me know. Yeah. Awesome, okay. okay. Moving on, um, communications committee. Yes, the communications committee met on May 5th via Zoom. We talked briefly about updates on COVID-19 closures and communications. As we discussed at our last meeting, most of those communications have been coming from the building principals or individual teachers. Uh, we briefly talked about the VET budget, which we all know um, has been wrapped up. For our facilities renewal, we discussed that pause. Um, seems that, you know, while it's not ideal, everyone understands that situation. We'll need to think about in the future how those plans um, possibly change. We talked about social media. Zoe gave us updates on social media and information that she has been monitoring. Um, the school lunch availability has been um, popular on social media as well. We have talked about sharing news and communications about the ongoing process for the superintendent search, making sure that the public is informed on that um, and that we keep closed tabs and communications on that process throughout. Thanks to Zoe for keeping up with that and creating a presence on the website. And finally, we talked about some things we'll look forward to over the summer, including newsletter, um, so maybe updates to the website, communications over the summer as well. Our next meeting is scheduled for June 9th at 6.30. And that's it for communications. Thank you, Emily. Um, facilities. Hi, everyone. Um, the facilities uh, met uh, twice, actually, since our last meeting. On May 12th, um, we met, and uh, Bill McMinn uh, took us through uh, a few things. One was updating us on uh, the work that he's uh, continuing to catch up on and, and do in all the school buildings, uh, covers all areas, plumbing, electrical, carpentry, uh, HVAC, um, way ahead of schedule and taking advantage of the empty buildings. Um, nothing material really, I would say, has changed with the announcement of the schools being um, closed, at least physically, for the rest of the academic year. Uh, they feel very good about the condition of the buildings, uh, as well as the ability to do this phased reopening uh, and to keep the uh, staff safe uh, with what Tom and, and Heather described. So uh, kudos to Bill and to his team. Uh, Bill uh, advised us about some projects that were uh, out to bid. 
uh, for the uh, wastewater treatment plant at Daniel Hand and for trash and recycling. Uh, he actually updated us on those bids uh, tonight uh, in our second meeting. Um, he also gave us some updates and some planning on uh, athletic plans for the Green Hill campus. Um, and the board, uh, excuse me, the uh, committee also convened tonight in executive session uh, to review a uh, real estate transaction. End of report. Thank you, Tom. Finance committee. Did Kirk make it back? He was having technical difficulties. Yeah, Katie, um, Kirk was actually calling me just earlier to tell me that he's lost his internet connection. He was going to try and join us by phone. I don't think he has. I don't see him on the list. I just um, phone number. Um, well, I gave him I gave him the phone number. That's why he was calling me. Um, yeah. Well, we have um, we do have. I was at the meeting earlier. Tom Screes was at the meeting earlier. Most of the committee is still here, and we Stacey, and Stacy's here too. Have Stacy exactly. So um, why don't we see if he will pop in? But we'll keep moving forward. So. The finance, who else is on the finance committee? Tom Pellegrino and Greg, correct? Oh, Galen, sorry, yeah. my, forgive me. So if you guys wanna, you know, <laughs> off the cuff. <laughs> Galen, you're muted, honey. It's just as well, I don't have much to say. Um, <laughs> Stacy, uh, uh, Stacy basically led us through um, uh, uh, possible fuel savings, um, expenditures, line item shifts, um, and possible reimbursements. That's the big broad framework. And then I'll let the experts take it from there. Yeah, I just took a look at kind of the status of where we are from now until we close out the books. Um, there's obviously some, a lot of unknowns. Uh, this time at the end of the year, we're trying to reconcile accounts and see where we have some surpluses and deficits. Um, we, you know, we talked at length about um, looking towards next year. You know, obviously, when we did the budget in October, November, we weren't thinking about masks and sanitizer and, and wipes and, and all that. So um, that's something that we have to be mindful of. If there's something that you know, we're getting strong signals about, we need to purchase one or another or more of these items. We may want to be looking at that between now and June 30th. And I think buying some time between now and closing out the books is probably the, the best course. Um, so we can make some really good decisions. Uh, there could be some information coming our way that could be advantageous. We did, um, it's a very fluid situation, of course. We did discuss the possibility of creating a COVID reserve fund, but again, those, mm -hmm. um, those are, that's ongoing, I think. Yeah, and I think process-wise, we discussed that if there was any action by the board, this could wait till uh, June. Uh, Tom and uh, Stacy wanted to put this in front of the committee just for tonight for, for our review. You see, did we leave anything out? Oops. I think we're good. Okay. Um, finance, uh, nope, that was finance personnel. Nothing to report. Uh, CIP um, has not met. Policy, he has policy. Oh, thank you. I always do that. Policy committee, forgive me, Greg. No report. Uh, Lauren liaison. No report. Um, Scott Murphy, Board of Selectmen report. So a quick report um, from the Board of Selectmen. So as you guys know, we're in the process of reopening the town. Um, so some of the buildings and businesses in our town will begin to start the reopening process uh, tomorrow. We actually have a um, committee that we're discussing spinning up. Um, it's sort of spawning from an internal group um, of town employees, but the group will be called the Long-Term Recovery Committee as we transition from emergency operations and some of the governor's um, declarations into the long-term recovery. And education will be certainly a part of that. Um, I, I actually made that point in the Board of Selectmen meeting um, as it was noticeably missing. So um, we will have um, the long-term committee meet, recovery committee. Um, it's made up of all sorts of folks, healthcare, faith services, appointed boards, 
town operations, ER management, planning and economic development, community outreach and health. So just to give, give you a sense and really the focus um, of this committee is just to provide a safe return of town functions and services in accordance with state and federal guidelines. So that's really sort of the, the, the initial focus. Um, and, and obviously some of these businesses are in the process of opening starting tomorrow um, and some with a target of June 1st, um, you know, given the, the order around salons. We also are spending a fair amount of time getting the beaches in order um, for everybody's use. And um, I think most of you probably saw or experienced that um, for Saturday, Sunday and holidays will be residents only with proof of residency, whether that's a beach pass, whether that's your driver's license, um, et cetera. But we will still have social distancing in order. Um, you, you won't have to wear a mask as long as you're staying six feet away. And there is signage um, all over the place now. Um, I actually saw some signage um, down on the streets uh, recently that, that speak to social distancing, reminding people not only when they're walking, when they're biking, um, or when they're at the beach. So important stuff there to remind all of our citizens. Um, uh, sort of a separate point um, as we think about, you know, the recovery um, we obviously postponed the referendums. I know you guys were all involved in that, uh, but just sort of reiterating uh, from a Board of Selectmen standpoint that we are committed to bring these referendums to the public and we'll clearly collaborate and work very closely with uh, all of you on the Board of Education um, when the time is right to bring those to uh, referendum next year. Um, online learning, I, I mentioned this the last time, but I, I do want to express, you know, from a Board of Selectmen standpoint, from a citizen standpoint, from a parent standpoint, um, congratulations to everything each and every one of you are doing on behalf of our students, um, you know, from administrators uh, to teachers um, every single day, even the paras. I mean, everybody's just, you know, working so hard to make sure that it's successful for all our students. Um, so there's a huge appreciation there. Um, obviously, when we start thinking about the fall term of our schools, uh, the Board of Selectmen certainly believes firmly that the health and safety um, are the priorities of our townspeople, and that's what they want. Um, and so obviously, I'm assuming that that will clearly um, be a part of your conversation as you think about the fall semester. Um, one last point, I'm, I'm also the liaison to the Madison Youth and Family Board, and we had a really interesting dialogue at our previous meeting, all on public record, um, with respect, uh, and this was sort of based on a student report, um, we have two student liaisons as well, and the discussion was around um, the perceived differentiation between uh, level one course load and level two and three coursework. Um, that the students are currently doing online. And uh, the perception was that it was students were staying up till two and three in the morning, working on the level one courses and the uh, level two and three uh, children and students were out, um, you know, enjoying the sunshine. So just a bit of feedback that that was coming through um, my experience with Madison Youth and Family Services. Um, and then I guess my last point, just to echo what, Tom Scree said uh, regarding Dave D'Alessio, I had the privilege, and I think I actually coached with Dave D'Alessio, I coached Catherine Hart's two girls. Um, what, a, what a treat that was, what a special time that was to coach uh, softball with my daughter, with, um, with Dave D'Alessio. So that, that couldn't be more fitting of a um, celebration of his life uh, to name that, uh, that room after him. So back to you guys, end of report. Okay. Um, audience response, I still don't have any attendance. Is there any audience response? Um, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Emily. Thank you. Um, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the minutes of the April 28th, 2020 Board of Education meeting. Uh, so moved, Diane. Second, Tom. 
Those are good. Thank you. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the minutes of the May 5th, 2020 Board of Education meeting. So moved, Diane. Second, Second Tom. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I need a motion to approve amendment number four to the Chartwell's agreement, originally dated July 1, 2016. I'll move, Galen. Thank you, Galen. Second, Emily. Thank you, Emily. Discussion? Thank you for all of your hard work on this. I appreciate it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve um, a donation of chairs for the language lab at Daniel Hand High School. So move, Diane. Second, Emily. Thank you. Any discussion? I'd like to express our gratitude for the very generous gift. Here. I hope they get to sit in them soon. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Any old business, future agenda items, meetings and dates of importance were in your packet. Before so I turn into the, one thing, uh, in the meetings and dates of importance on May 20th, our committee meeting, it says 7 p.m., but I think it's really 5.30. For which committee, Diane? Uh, the superintendent search committee meeting tomorrow. Oh, right. Uh, we, we're starting early, remember? So we're interviewing the three firms. Oh, so it says seven. And it, it says seven, yes. but it should say five thirty. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. I, that one's because it's a essentially an executive session, not as important publicly posted. But thank you for pointing it out, so people aren't late. Um. Uh, before I turn into a pumpkin, now I need a motion to adjourn. Oh, Tom. Back in Emily. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Stay well. We have to vote. We have to, we vote. Have to vote. And I want to see you turn into a pumpkin. I vote nay. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Opposed, Kaylin. All right. Goodbye. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. All right.